just as sunflowers chase the sun. Inductees into the South Dakota Hall of Fame chase their dreams day after day, year after year. The 700 plus inductees in the Hall of Fame come from all backgrounds and corners of our state. What their stories have in common is their unwavering courage and belief in their dreams. These dream chasers are an inspiration for us all to strive for excellence and believe in our own potential to chase dreams well into the future. After two combat tours in Vietnam, Senator Pressler ran for Congress in 1974 on a shoestring budget with a positive and clean campaign. His style resonated with South Dakota voters. While not easy, he has demonstrated that you can win by being for something rather than against the opponent. He was the principal author of the Telecommunications Act in 1996, which broadened internet capabilities in South Dakota. His willingness to champion new ideas is an inspiration to all South Dakotans. At every opportunity, Pressler has demonstrated skill, creativity, and high moral character. He is a champion for excellence in South Dakota. We are with 2020 Hall of Fame inductee, former Senator Larry Pressler, and I'm going to give, I won't do your background justice, but I'm gonna give a thumbnail for those who may not know it. Grew up in Humboldt, South Dakota, you were a basketball player. You were very active in 4-H nationally, internationally in 4-H, Rhodes Scholar, Harvard Law School, two combat tours in Vietnam, two terms in the U.S. House, as I recall, 18 years as a U.S. Senator, chairing the important Commerce Committee during your term. Uh, then went on after your Senate career as a lecturer and still as a public servant in many not-for-profit entities. So we're pleased that you're here today, but with all of that illustrious background, what were the moments as you look back in your life that were really pivotal to steering you to a career in public service? Well, uh, I think uh, growing up on a farm in uh, eastern South Dakota, where we didn't have much money, but uh, there were some public servants who helped us, such as our teachers and uh, the, the people in the the uh, township board and uh, elsewhere, elsewhere, it seemed to me that um, to be able to serve the public would be a good thing. Also, uh, my parents always said, "Do for it's what you do for others that counts the most and so forth, and that's a part of public service. So I guess it was uh, a combination of having a lot of people do things for me, a lot of people help me when I was, uh, a child, I had a stutter, a childhood stutter, and I got some help from some of the teachers and from uh, uh, the speech clinic down at the University of South Dakota. So I had, of course, you have to take care of yourself. First, you, you got to earn a living, and uh, uh, but I decided I would devote as much of my life as I could afford to public service. And as a young man. You know, we, we talk about higher powers and opening those doors of putting someone in front of you who'd had a Rhodes Scholarship, and then you go on to Harvard, and then you're in Vietnam. You know, how did those things lead to an evolution of what is the next step for Larry Pressler? How did you get from Rhodes Scholarship? Harvard Law seems like, if you, not knowing you, would seem like a natural, but then Vietnam, and then where does the, I think I'll run for the U.S. House of Representatives come in, yeah, how does yeah. that happen? Well, actually, it wasn't planned, uh, and uh, in fact, people who knew me as a, ch as a child or a grade school student are rather surprised that I should have had a career in speaking or in public service or rhetoric in the sense that uh, I had a childhood stutter and I was rather shy. Uh, um, I thought about it. Uh, uh, I was looking for an opportunity and uh, others saw it and, and it was sort of a combination. Uh, so I, I ran for the U.S. House and won, uh, a little bit to my surprise. I was very lucky to win the nomination. Mm -hmm. Re-elected and then went on to the Senate. That's right. And I stayed in the Senate for three terms and then I was defeated in uh, 1996, so I've had some defeats in there too, also mm -hmm. in my lifetime. What do you look back as some of your legislative accomplishments, things that will have a legacy as far as you're concerned long beyond your life on this earth? Well, I did a lot of things in agriculture and business, um, so those are some of the things that have changed 
from technology. So we have to try to keep up. And so my lifetime has been one of breathtaking changes. As we go along, we must um, remember that uh, part of the challenge that God gives us is to, we sometimes have to adopt to change, or we have to adopt to our own health, or we have to adopt to whatever's going on. And uh, uh, so I'm grateful that I, but during my lifetime, we've had so many changes, it's been breathtaking for me to mm -hmm. comprehend them, and they're still going on. Mm -hmm. You talked earlier in the interview about overcoming a stutter as a mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I when I think back and look at your resume, I'm thinking of a kid today in Humboldt or pick mm -hmm. any other small town in South Dakota who might not see himself as the next potential mm -hmm. U.S. Senator from mm -hmm. the state of South Dakota because he comes from a small town or he or she has a lisp. What would you say to those people about the possibilities that exist today? Uh, and so I would say to the young people that uh, don't underestimate yourself. It is, um, we South Dakotans tend to underestimate ourselves. We need to remember that uh, we can do just as well as anybody. In any event, we need to, we're just as good as anybody and uh, a little better in many cases.